We got some legends in this thing, though, Wick. That's right. I'm talking about Alabama legends in that, this thing. That's right, Montgomery. The Pimp and the Gangster. Yeah. Dirty. What's yeah. good with it, fellas? What's, what's happening? Do, what's what's do? Man, feeling good, feeling great. Now, I mean, first of all, we appreciate y'all coming in here. What y'all don't know is that y'all are uh, one of the most requested groups that we've been having for the last five years. Ooh. Every time I'm looking in the comments, they're saying, when you going to get the Pimp and the Gangster in this right. thing? Man, what the hell's going on with it? Man, that's so, love. I mean, that's fellas. Yeah. Appreciate it. I mean, appreciate it. we need to story, man. I mean, how did the pimp and the gangster get together and create an iconic group in this thing? Uh, first, we'll start out with, we sister chairing. Mm -hmm. We cousins. True. Yeah. Real blood cousins. Okay. My mama and his mama. Yeah. Um, I started rapping first. Mm -hmm. Of course, because I'm older than gangster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I started in the third grade. So when I'm talking about third grade, deserve to get paid, all this, da, 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 da. It's real. Okay. Um, I went from rapping by myself to wanting a partner. Yeah. I felt it was dope to have not just a hype man on stage, but somebody can split them verses with you. You right. know what I'm saying? Because right. I know if you a solo rapper, you doing three verses by yourself. Come like on, back guys. then, we had to give them three verses. Now they just give you 12 and two verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back then, it was real rap. You finna do 316. Three yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Man, let me cut this thing down some. So... <laughs> I'm coming home, you know, doing so. Then G watched me. He a young dude, but he in the street with his little partner that he ran it with. Yeah. But he watching his big cuz and spit. Yeah. I come home one day. Check this out, cuz. Man, what? Nigga rap. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> the whole time I've been dealing. Can we we cussing on Say what you feel. Okay, okay. Good. The whole time I'm dealing with other niggas trying to get them to meet my level of flow. Mm. The whole time, the nigga that... We stand with, we live with our grandma at a time, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, we always was in the same house. You know, yeah. you had them distant cousins where you might have to go over to your cousin's house. Me and him was so close to where either I was at his house, or he was at my house. Yeah. And then both of us at our grandma's house. So we spent our whole life not just as cousins, but more brothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got more people think we brothers until I tell them, well, my mama and his mama is sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And man, I'm listening to him rap. The nigga cadence in the flow. I'm like, this the nigga I need to be fun with. <laughs> so on. when you hear the song, Paid My Dudes, yeah. it's real. Like, I come home and listen to this nigga. I'm like, this the nigga. Okay, bam. So we started the groups. So you got your different names you're going to play with, players yeah. for life, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Till we just kept it at, man, let's just leave that bitch dirty. Mm. And it went from dirty to migrating to dirty boys. Mm. So, so that that's the story of me and him actually meeting yeah. as a group. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I can go even further to how we made the iconic group dirty was we we our our our, um, our marriage to how we we flow. We complemented each other. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. We don't just rap. He bring his verse up. We writing in the same room. Mm -hmm. I know what his verse saying. I'm not gonna say the same shit he's saying. Yeah. We always had the concept of writing our hook first. Yeah. Every rap we have ever written in our life, we wrote the hook first. Mm. We get the beat. We get the hook first. True. We'll take two, three days until we get the hook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you write the verses. Because mm -hmm. what that do is it keep your rap centered around what the topic is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we always knew that if we're going to do 16 songs, every 16, every song need to be different. Yeah. So it need to be a hook about this, a hook about this, 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 this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, like, like, like in a nutshell, this my little cousin, and, and that's what we did. Him, gangster, I mean, coming out of Alabama with it, though. Right. How the hell did y'all get y'all deal and get heard? Because, I mean, y'all kind of kicked the door wide right. open for the whole state. Oh, I got to get this one. Hold on. Let, go let, let, let me I, get this yeah, one. Come on with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to get this one. I got to eat on this one right here because we came up doing talent shows. Okay. Mm -hmm. We was winning the talent show. Uh -huh. Oh, these two little young dudes out the hood, we doing talent show, getting dollars thrown at us. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Coming up at the age 13. He eight, I'm um, yeah. 13, blah, 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 blah. So it got serious mm -hmm. when it got to the age of, well, the year, I'll go by the year. Yeah. Like 96, I'm coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. We doing the local talent shows. 97, we like, damn, we around here grinding. We 
selling dope. We doing goofy shit. We yeah. was doing shit like we selling dope, but then we robbing prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, listen. I know my mama gonna end up seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah. We would catch a prostitute getting out of car with a motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, we got a pistol. We know she got at least thirty, forty dollars on her. <laughs> right. We fourteen, fifteen. Right. We robbing prostitutes. My God. We getting it yeah. <laughs> on that on that level. <laughs> we getting a little three point five. We, <laughs> you know, we on some bullshit in that age. Yeah. So we we get older to the age of you hitting ninety six, ninety seven. We're aging to the point that man, let's take this rap a little more serious. Mm -hmm. So 97, we coming out of school, we graduating. Um, right there, 98, 99, we wrote our first real rap and recorded in the studio. Yeah. And the first rap that we recorded in the studio was Rolling Vols. Mm -hmm. Rolling Vols yeah. was our first rap we ever recorded on the mic. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you got a lot of people they gonna do a song, 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 do a song. Do a song. Yeah. Then they get dope boys in the trap. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our first rap we did on the microphone. Don't understand how I got a rap come off the mic. He rap come off the mm -hmm. mic. Counting yeah. bars. Blah 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 blah. The first one we wrote, it was dead. Boom. So we're, we're working that album. Mm -hmm. We got a guy to deal. We dealing with Mike Jackson. Mm -hmm. The house that we were staying in, he came over. He said, man, I heard y'all this, this, and this. We were winning talent shows. When he came, he said, man, I want to just meet y'all, blah, 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 blah. He came. We got guns in the corner. So now we at the age of we really, we, we, we fucking with the dope. We ain't not no big time dope dealers, but we doing some shit that's going to lead us into some fucked up shit. Yeah. When he come in, he see it, he like, God damn. What the fuck y'all doing? Yeah. This too much talent in one room for y'all to be fucking with this shit. Yeah. When he left, he said, man, if y'all would leave that shit alone for about six months, he said, I'll give y'all allowance. And this dude, he was just doing real estate. He was doing some bullshit. Mm -hmm. We was getting it in. Well, we was getting it in. Well, we was making a substantial amount. Well, we was okay. Yeah. Him giving us a $200 a piece a week, that we ain't going to get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... We gave him a chance, right? Mm -hmm. So we're working on the album. It's like 98 going into 99. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got rolling bowls, and we finna ride off of that. Mm -hmm. Me and my partner, well, we, we, we're done with the album. We did an album. So this album got the, the hit, the, or not, not hit the flow. Um, the Rolling Vols, the 6D Creeping, Black Candy Man. Our first album, we out the gate with solid bona fide hits. Mm -hmm. We done with the album. We finna drop it. This our second second album. The yeah. first album was controversial. That's right. Mm. The second album we're doing is the Pimpin' the Gangster. Yeah. We're done with it. Me and one of my partners go to the movies. We go to the movies. I had bought a Cadillac and everything because we living up to the name, Rolling Vols. That's I got right. the Jadens on it. We yeah. Vol, boo, boo, boo. Come out. We walk into the car. We finna go see some chicks. We walk into the car. I'm like, damn, I know I parked right here. Oh, shit. I must have parked over there. <laughs> the Cadillac got stolen. Hey, my car? Oh, my car. Boys, if you ain't never had to start your car stole and it hit you like on some shit, like, yeah, hey, yeah, we'll build in a minute. Shit. <laughs> I'm on this type of shit. Yeah, I got my partner with me. Shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Hold on, hold on. Hmm. Man, these niggas done stole my car, bro. <laughs> Bruh, listen. So, 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 <laughs> after the car got stolen, the next two days, my cousin, Dr. Fingers, yeah. the one who made 6D Creeping, Candyman, Rolling Vols, Dr. Fingers, uh, 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 the one of the dopest producers to come yeah, out yeah. of Montgomery. He's my cousin. That is crazy as hell, fellas. But continue. He's my cousin. He called me. He said, cuz. He don't know the cost, though. Yeah. Cuz I got the beat I want y'all to hear. I'm like, man, I ain't really, we, we done with that, album, bro. Yeah. But no, you just come here. So we went over there. We smoking. He put the beat on. Doom, doom, tch, 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 tch. 
I'm like, okay, this be dope. Yeah, yeah. I called Mike. I said, man, the ad, it, 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 it's too late. And who we sent it to? Rodney Mills. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. Rodney Mills was yeah. mixing it. Yeah. Man, Rodney Mills already got it. He gonna try to talk. I'm like, bro, listen, they got that beat. It, it's it's missing this. He yeah. was like, what y'all got to it? I said, nothing right now. But we finna take it home. Yeah. So while we in the den, like I said, we get the hook for her. Yeah. So we're like, man, we need to do something on this bitch where it's going. Oh. I know that y'all. Me, I'm angry about my cop being. <laughs> That's right. I'm still, I'm still on level 10. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here we here, boy. Here we here, boy. We just saying that. Like, okay. So then G like, mm, mm, mm. she let throw something in. Boom, boom, boom. Long story short. When the dirty boy dropped, better hit the floor. Hit the floor. Hit the floor. Hit the floor. <laughs> here we here, boy. So now, so now we need some verses. Yeah, yeah. Boom. We do our verses. I set it up. I know that y'all feel me now. See, we drop that verse. So we, we're building something very special at that moment. Because yeah. it's coming back to back. Yeah. We done with it. We're going to do two verses and send it out the door. Yeah. I said, uh-uh, hell no. These niggas stole my car. I got to put some about my Cali. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let me get the last verse. Because we used to, I do a verse, he'll do a verse. We, we split, split the verse. That's right, right. right. That, nigga, that nigga saw me eating. On that pad, I don't went eight ball. Right, him. right. She said, I said, could let me eat. He said, nigga, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all think we been doing, bro? Send it home, eating snacks, getting fat. <laughs> well, it was over. <laughs> Do you know? We sent it to Rat the Boom, got it mixed, blah, 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 blah. The album was selling so many that a representative from Universal, which was checking on Monica. Uh, singer Monica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was calling the stores, how the album doing. Uh, buddy from uh, the African Head Shop. Yeah. When he answered the phone, he like, yeah, blah, blah, how the Monica album doing? I don't know what the fuck Monica album doing, <laughs> but there's some little young nigga down here. Yeah. They hard as fuck. They call the Dirty Boys, and they selling 30, 40, 50 copies every hour. <laughs> Send me a copy. Sent it to Dino Duvalier. Yeah, yeah. Dino. Mm -hmm. Sent it to Dino. We were signed the next week. My God. No, no fucking, you know, it was just on him getting it and uh, no social media. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Man, we got a quarter million dollar deal and we got signed for that song. Damn. That's the song they wanted. They got the whole album, but that's the song when he heard it, we ran it with it. We even dropped that song first mm. and came back. Yeah. In the second single was Rolling Vogue. That's right. Yeah. When Rolling right. Vogue was supposed to be first. If so, if the nigga wanna stole my Cadillac. Damn. We wanna wrote that song. Yeah. Mm. And we wanna had that deal. So by that nigga stealing my Cadillac, that's what got us that deal. So I thank that nigga. My God. At the end of the day, <laughs> I thank him. <laughs> And yeah, that's the story. Did, that's did how you ever going. get the lack back? I got it back. It was okay. in the country. The rims were gone. Nigga uh, took the door. I had a gold grill. Yeah. Yeah, the nigga did it. It was yeah. in Alabama. It was in the country in Alabama. In, yeah, yeah. Okay, Alabama. Georgia ain't too far away. Right, 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 right. 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 Yeah. I want, um, uh, what was the pressure like, though, knowing that y'all the first big group that has came out of Alabama? Because I think uh, um, JT Money, one of them from the Mar Brother Marquise, one of them from Alabama, but being as big as y'all were, the mm -hmm. first group with a major record deal, did y'all feel pressure to have to, like, put Alabama out there for the world to see? Was it Because when I came out of Decatur, East Point ran it. Like, behind them, they used to tap dance and shit South over there. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't yeah, tap yeah. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> for but, nobody. But Collie Paul, they had outcasts and the goody mobs. And Decatur, we wasn't shit. You see what I'm saying? Right. So when right. I first had to drop the strip from that indicator, I felt the sense to have to kind of compete with the rest of the state. Right. I want to know, did y'all feel like that pressure to put Alabama on the map against Atlanta and Texas and Memphis? Yeah. And Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did because, like you said, we were the first one to do it. And Alabama had been overshadowed and looked over so long mm. that nobody kind of looked at us as hip-hop. Like, right. like we had hip-hop down here. Right. So... We kind of felt like once we did make it, we got to ride this way. We got to take the whole state with us. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's that's the approach we had as far as when we write songs, as far as uh, anytime we show up, we just bring a Bama with us. It's a whole Bama. 
Right. So right, we right. represented Belma like that. What yeah, was the yeah. what was what how, what was the shows like? One of my favorites. So I'm gonna get into it later. Well, I wish the nigga would. That's, right. That's yeah. like I just play that Ooh. like to death. Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't got, I don't want the jail fucking with that song. Yeah, man. <laughs> but, um, a lot of niggas want to jail. Yeah. What was what were the shows like? You know, before y'all really got out there to everybody else, just because like okay. When we first dropped, I used to tell you, be high, yeah. that when I would do something sharing off Glenwood, word of mouth, we didn't wild, even have wild. a mate. We, we weren't on TV or nothing yet. Yeah. But everybody just from word of mouth from the CDs right. would be like, we were all shining groups that was out with right. major deals. Right. Was it the same thing with y'all? Like when y'all knew Alabama was behind y'all, y'all could just oh, throw yeah. a show and, you know, hey, I'm going to be here Friday. Right. What were those shows like, you know, that early, early stage? Blow. Yeah. Yeah. Blow. When, when, we, when we was doing the... Um, when we was actually doing the talent shows, a lady mm. out of Cedar Park, OG, her name was Coon, a real hustler. Yeah. And uh, out the projects, what she would do is get all the young kids and uh, line us up, man. We go out there, we might do, uh, somebody might do cameo, lip scene cameo, somebody might lip scene Shirley Murdoch, somebody <laughs> right, might lip right. scene Beastie Boy, whatever, 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 yeah. whatever rap, run DMC. But me and him, we would go out there with our other cousin, and he would beatbox, mm. and we would flow. Yeah. So we was writing raps at 11, 12, and 13 with real hooks Yeah. at that age. So we had a fan base of the neighborhoods knowing that we rap. Yeah. So when you moving forward from that, them same people know that, oh, okay. So they was doing it then, now they doing it bigger. Mm-hmm. It, it was real love. Yeah, and yeah. when we came out and we shined for not just the state of Alabama, but the GDs. Because mm. see, Gangsta represented the GDs hard to the point that now, not only do we have our city behind us, we got a whole nation. nation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you know how that that, that gang culture ran yeah. from this side of the country to that side of the country, yeah. up and down. So when you, you, you hear him, damn near the first rapper that was representing black flags on the national level, mm -hmm. it took off. Even in Chicago, yeah. we even had radio DJs. We'll we have like, you know how they do the mean where you got 30, 40 Gs, at press run. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the press run guys, he stood up while we talking. Listen, man, whatever y'all do, I need y'all just to tell the GDs in Chicago, to stop coming in these record stores stealing all the dirty CDs. <laughs> it, was, it was these niggas' Bible. Yeah, right. Because you know the game coach in Chicago, yep. BD, GD. Exactly. So by him representing GD so hard on the album, they felt like, damn, we got somebody speaking for us versus Crip and Blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which it was only banging on wax with Crips and the Blood mm -hmm. from Cali. Yeah. So when he came out on that type of time, we was the first to really, really, really openly bang GD out loud on the local radio stations mm. and nationwide. So that put like a lot behind us. So when we would go to cities, it would just be packed. I'm right. talking about to the wall with, with niggas just representing GD. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they in the front. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just a lot of like, man, y'all got us through this. Bro, man, I, I, I wouldn't live without y'all, boy. And then the songs we give them, we give them, like, If I Die Tonight. Exactly. Tell my babies that they daddy was a gangster. Like, yeah. these was real fucking songs. Yeah. And we can relate to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the person that's actually buying it. When we exactly. get to the club, we walking through the crowd. Nah, I don't want to be in no fucking VIP. Yeah. We walking through the crowd. So we made ourselves so, you can't do it now. Right. Yeah. But we made ourselves so touchable that yeah. it was more like, damn, man, I feel like I've been knowing y'all. Yeah. Us being humble. For years, us doing shows, before I would even say one word on the mic, I had this thing that I would do. Hey, y'all can be in the world, but y'all here with us. And I know I want to thank y'all because, and what I'm going to give y'all is one of my knees. And I get down on my knees on the stage. I can't give you both of my knees because mm -hmm. both of them belong to the Lord. But I'm going to get down on one of my knees and thank y'all for coming in. Yeah. That's for we even start hit the flow. Yeah. That right there. They love us. Damn. What nigga, you know what I'm saying, come on the show and get down on the mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I'm in y'all right, city. Right, Shit. I'm right. going to get down on my knee and thank y'all for spending y'all $30 exactly. to watch me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our shows built, bro, to where it was like we did arenas. Right. Yeah, we ran through that arena stage, so that shit was dope. Like, I got, and then I got all the footage. 
You do. Come on now. When y'all when y'all were coming up, and uh, this for you, gangster. When you when y'all was coming up, um, what what groups and 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 sounds of music influenced y'all? Was it was it the, was it like the Memphis sound? Was it the the Texas the Ghetto Boys sound? Was mm. it the you know like he said the Chicago music? What 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 did you listen to when you came up that said you know what this is the type of music I like? To be honest with you, we had a lot of that cast. A lot yeah. of that, yeah. all that dungeon family, Goody Mob, yeah. Cash, Ghetto Mafia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we kind of kept it like in the South. Memphis kind of was a little influenced fire as with Eight Ball and MJG, yes, right. Three right. Six. You know what I'm saying? So all of them was a influence, but we kind of wanted to separate our sound from their sound and make our own sound, mm -hmm. but just still had that influence representing the South, representing what we were representing. Right. But just making it our own. So that's why we kind of sound the way we sound. You can't really compare us to any other group versus us just being two dudes. Like you say, A-Ball, MJG, then you can compare us to Dirty or... Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you hear our sound, it's mm -hmm. different. It's yeah. totally different. You know what I'm saying? So. It kind of reminded me of a gangster outcast because y'all okay. got them slick tongues, like right. big and dreidel. Yeah, you yeah. see what yeah. I'm right, saying? Right, right, so right. that's the first thing. When I first ever heard y'all, I said, damn, them niggas there, they got the slick tongues like them, but they but they, but they more street. Because, you know, right. the cast, them are guys now, but right. they were more commercial. Right, you right, right. You right, understand right, what I'm right, saying? Right, so right. when I heard, that's what I took away from it. Now, and, did y'all hear that from other people, or this is your first time hearing that? Oh, no. We done no, heard, we'd heard that, yo. Yeah, A-Ball and MJG. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and it might have a lot to do with the, the duo group. It ain't too many duo groups. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know. How did y'all feel about those comparisons at the time? Did it did it ever slight y'all? You're like, wait a minute now. We dirty in this goddamn thing. No. I that's didn't. a compliment. Yeah, that's a compliment. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because we looked up to them guys. We represent them guys. We banged them guys coming yeah. up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it wasn't yeah. like we would. Basically. Looking down on them, we kind of look like, yeah, we appreciate that. You exactly. Know what I'm right, right, visuals, right. man. When it came time to shoot those visuals for Hit the Flow and Vogue and stuff like that, what was it like getting those big budget videos going on? Mm. I hate it now. <laughs> what? <laughs> man, 200 some thousand for a video. You know, my class field, yeah. shooting them videos and shit, bro. When nine motherfuckers got an iPhone and a GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, and that 200 some thousand gonna come out of your money before you see anything. Uh, all, it, it was all a game. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? And it was set up for us to lose. It was set up for the artists to lose. You know, it's a tax write off for the company. Yeah. They putting 200,000 in you. Then they gonna get it back. Yeah. It's just so much with that shit, man, that if we could have did it different, it's a few things we would change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, them, them big budget videos, like looking back at it now, it, it, one thing about it I say, it, it, it put us in a different region. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them big videos, the videos was important back then. Exactly. Right? These motherfuckers doing videos now, you don't even see, I don't even watch videos. I don't watch them now. Yeah, like yeah. when station videos even come on, you feel me? Exactly. Go and watch them. Back then, you watched them because you had the box. Exactly. So so you're being seen on, uh, uh, not your rap TV city. raps, rap yeah. city and shit, yeah. in the basement. Exactly. It meant something. But it still was so fucking high to spend 200000 for a video versus now, and now you just can push a button and over a million people can see it. Thanks. And motherfuckers literally recording that shit with an iPhone, bro. Yeah. So yeah. it's a different time, you know. What was it like getting into the music industry, though, fellas? I mean, was it everything that y'all hoped that it would be, or was it a little bit more wilder than y'all expected, man? Hmm. Half and half, I want to say. I think it was something that we expected, but then on the business side, coming in so young and not really understanding the business. Yeah. It was a lot that we needed to learn mm. far as just keeping that business straight. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The music and all that, that's easy because we, you know, we do that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And we got to follow them. We got the fans that back us and show us love everywhere we go. But it's more of that business side that we kind of needed to learn a little bit better. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Another song right. I got to ask y'all about is that Twinkies, man. That was one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. Talk to me about putting that banger together. Mm. Uh, I think we dealt, we dealt with the time. We dealt with what? was ever important at the mm -hmm. time. So if everybody was riding Twinkies, let's do a song about Twinkies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you mentioned I Wish a Motherfucker Would. Right. At that time, uh, Cedric Entertainer had a uh, a stage show yeah. 
And at the end, uh, he was like, I live for the wish a nigga motherfucker would. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. he started doing skits where I wish a motherfucker would. I'm like, <laughs> shit, that's a song. Come yeah. on. You taking it around with it. So when we did Twinkies, we did Twinkies when the biggest rims was Twinkies. Not Twinkies be on maximum. Exactly. Twinkies is for girls. <laughs> twinkies for your kids. You know what I'm saying? If you ride Twinkies. For your big wheel. But back then, why in the fuck they looked so big? Exactly. And now you can put them motherfuckers under an escort. You know what I'm <laughs> so, so when we did Twinkies, man, and like I said, you talking, you talking Dr. Fingers. Yeah. You talking one of the coldest producers, like he really honed our style. Yeah. He honed, he made us because when you do um songs, you got to have somebody like with G's and with Shout you yeah. know what I'm saying? So you have um Zaytoven and Gucci. That's right. Dr. Fingers and Dirty Boys. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also we had Kevin Cates. I mean Kevin uh K.O. K.O. Cates. Yeah, I so know it's KO, like yeah. Kev, yeah. He was so, a bad boy yeah, too. Now. So he gave us them real hard bangers, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Rick Rock gave us that Southwest. Yeah. But but the mecca of Dirty came from, and the sound of Dirty came from Dr. Fingers, man. Like, he built those beats around us. But that's what I'm talking about, too, with y'all being family at the same time. Talk about that chemistry when y'all got into the studio, because, I mean, when everybody's in this thing working for a common goal, we got to score a touchdown in here. Right. And then also, what was Thanksgiving like when y'all coming back with the bread? Right, right, right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, true, true. Come on. You want to get that? He don't be liking to talk. Look, he's silly. 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 Uh, it's like, uh, I think our family was proud of us. Yeah. So when we came back, it wasn't about the bread. It was more about, these my motherfucking cousins. Yeah. It was more so a... Uh, our younger cousins, even our older cousins, telling people that them dirty boys, them my cousins, and call yeah. the crew, cuz, tell them who you is. Mm -hmm. So oh. we, we got to kick just out of debt versus yeah. anything because we come from a tight-knit family. Exactly. We come from a real big family. Yeah, My grandma, 10 kids, uh, 20, 30 grandkids, yeah. 64, 70 great-great-grandkids. So my grandma laid down a foundation where the Thomas family, like, we was a real big family. Exactly. We would have a family reunion every year. Mm. And even after Yo! On TV Raps, uh, Universal, we still at family reunions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we'll perform just for our family. Exactly. So so, so, so those families was like, we, we stayed on morals, principles, because we raised by real women. Exactly. Powerful women. Sally Thomas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anita Webster. Yeah. So it's like, we, we got some strong mamas. We got mamas that didn't play the bullshit. Yeah. We got mamas that cared about us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. But you get to an age where you quote unquote Robbing junkies because that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You wanted to be in the street. You ran it with niggas that's taking you down that way. Mm -hmm. We're not robbing junkies to eat. Mm -hmm. We're not robbing junkies because, or we're not selling dope because, man, we got to get it because if we don't, we going to be homeless. Mm -hmm. We did this shit because we wanted to. Yeah. We had mamas that struggled. They were, we were rich. Yeah. We got mamas that were struggling, but they made a way where, they going to make sure we got this exactly. or we got that. We looking at, damn, our mama going through this, our mama doing that. Man, I want J's. Yeah. In order for me to get J's, she ain't finna buy them. Come on now. Let me get out here and do this to get them. So it's more so of that fact versus, oh, we come from a struggle of total poverty. Yeah. I don't think we came from that to a, to a degree. Mm -hmm. Mama working two jobs, mama going to school, she trying to make ends meet. All right, we me and I. Yeah. You 18, 19, what you going to do? Either you going to be in the street or you going to go get a job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, that's the life you're living. Until you're on your own, then now you got your own struggles. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's more so of that with family. And we was raised on just do unto others as you had them do unto you. Yeah. So we kept that same sentiment growing up. At what point did it click in y'all head that y'all had to quit robbing the prostitutes and hustling out here <laughs> in these streets, though, too? Because, see, the other issue is when folks go down that road, they wind up stuck down there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how did y'all, you know, backtrack and say, you know what, let's get the hell out of here, do this music, and be successful? When, when we tried to do it one night and, and, and yeah, you got to check. It went bad. It went bad. <laughs> it went bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, man, kids, you not. And there's some 
Yeah. It's some funny shit now. Yeah. Right. But it went in. We tried to rob. <laughs> and, and, and the rob and the prostitute shit was at 13, 14, yeah. 15, right. 16. I know I'm going to be like, I know. My, and I got the type of mama, she going, and why the hell? Why the hell? Right, right. Why the hell? What y'all? I know damn well. Like, mama, listen. I don't want to hear all that. But, but one night we did it, man, and she gets out the car. We like, get up, bitch. <laughs> she just went to screaming. When she screaming, whoever the nigga is in the truck hit the brakes. She ran back to the car. This nigga done turned around with his gun and chased us. To, and we, when we got chased and I almost died, cause we had a gun. He ain't even had no fucking bullets in there. <laughs> <laughs> we got a gun. That's all you need to show. Get up, bitch. <laughs> what a prostitute go do? <laughs> now we got to use this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> And it went from us having to use it to not having no bullets and we ran for our life. Cause a nigga up on the curb trying right. to kill her. We right. make it back to our grandma's house and we like, no, bro. We got this to ain't get the us all McDonald's. This ain't it. This ain't it. Real shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. y'all be going to love outside of y'all family inside of Alabama though, man? I mean, what were the folks saying from Montgomery to Birmingham to Mobile about y'all, man? Ooh. Unconditional, unconditional yeah. love. Like anywhere we go in the state of in, in the state of Bama, in yeah. the city we in, it's like. And then the thing so funny is like they got so much love that we could have been just seeing them maybe a week ago. The next time we come, they still it's like they've just seen us the first time. Yeah, yeah. taking yeah. pictures, yeah. autographs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like in Bama, it's unconditional love. Yes, sir. Unconditional. Yeah. Do you do do you think that that Okay, you know, we know the fans, you know, uh, in Bama love y'all. But do you think that the industry as a whole give y'all the props that y'all really deserve? Mm -mm. I don't think so. And I think that that's because we ain't get that push like a lot of other right. artists got. Mm -hmm. Why it's going commercial or just having a major machine behind them to get that promo out there so people can know. A lot of folks didn't know about dirty you know what right. i'm saying like when we came out we hit hard first but right. the follow-up didn't hit as hard you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and we went through some struggles far as dealing with universal getting off universal dealing with rap a lot you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and once you going from a major label to a independent label right the budget is a little different you yeah. know what i'm saying right. the way they, they they do stuff is a little different the way they move and i think the way rap a lot moved back then was more of a how they probably moved when they was dealing with ghetto boys. Mm. They, they couldn't they couldn't get with the time as far as knowing how to promote a southeastern group like yeah. Dirty from Bama. Right. They was more of a Southwest. Texas. Texas. Right. Yeah. Nevada, California, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So I don't think they kinda knew how to really market us. Then, yeah. oh, go, go, go ahead, go with it. Yeah, when you were when y'all were with Universal, do as you reflect back on everything was there some things that maybe y'all didn't want to do? Because I had that problem when we were dealing with Sony. They were trying to get us to do those commercial records. But I I was kind of, a lot of the stuff y'all saying, me and Nino did the same type shit. Mm, right, you, you see what right, I'm saying? Right. And so when, when we did get that, our foot in the door to get that chance, we we really didn't know. You know, we, we, we were still on the mindset of, you know what I'm saying? Well, this is what got us here. So we're going to stick to this right here. Right. No, nah, I don't want to do no record with Foxy Brown. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I don't want to do right. no, you, you see what I'm saying? Right, right. As y'all reflect back, was that something that you could have did a little different to make it even go farther? Um, I think it, we could have. But I think, like he said, um, even with Universal, mm -hmm. Universal didn't know how to push us. We right. were so new and country. Gators with socks pulled up to my knee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they ain't understand. And we was in Mark Classfield, uh, not Mark Classfield, Money and Avery office in New York. Mm. Like, they looking at us like, what in the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> we, we know it's good. Yeah. We know it's going to sell, but what the fuck to do with it? <laughs> so the so, so they this? put, they put, I think they put most of their oomph behind Nelly because we had to compete with Nelly. Mm -hmm. We had to compete with, with Baby them with Cash Money. Mm -hmm. like, like, it was so many people on Universal. I think what they did was just grab a handful of, throw it up against the wall. Throw it up against the wall. Whoever stick, that's who we gonna run with. Because yeah. you, you listen to the shit, and I ain't dissing Nelly, you know what I'm saying? But you listen to the shit, Nelly was rapping and we was rapping. He was more palatable with the world. Commercial. 
Right. Then uh, that's what yeah. B-Hot like. So see, cause see, he tapped in. So I was, I was tap on y'all. Dance, don't I was on y'all. He was on Nelly. So I mean, I'm yeah. glad okay, you brought that in. Right. Right. with me. I was a big ass dirty fan. First right. of all, oh, right. uh, speaking of being a fan, what I loved about y'all is that y'all did what I call snapping as well as storytelling at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six deep creeping, man. Yeah, yeah. Storytelling. Break like that down right there when y'all said, let's get in this booth and tell some stories in this thing. Right, right. Well, I started with the storytelling. Yeah. Every, every rap that I had ever written in my life, I I write it in a story. Okay. It was hard for me to even come out of that. Mm. That's why if you if you go back and listen to all our raps, every verse I'm telling a story. Mm. I learned that by coming up off of Slick Rick, yeah. mm -hmm. which was my the greatest, mm -hmm. and Dana Dane. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Then was my two mm -hmm. favorite rappers, third, fourth, fifth grade. Yeah. I honed my skills behind Big Daddy Kane, Dana Dane, mm -hmm. and Slick Rick, and I noticed all they did was told stories. Mm -hmm. So that's why I told stories. But when G came up, he pulled me out of the telling the stories and just spitting real street shit. Yeah. Now, or, or then, I learned to not do so much of a story but spit bars too. Yeah. But at the same time, it was a gift and it was a curse. But the gift was beautiful because now my storytelling ability got me writing screenplays. I write movies, uh, I dialogue, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I understand the concept of the plot, the climax, the end, you know? Yeah. So I vicariously taught myself to write. Yeah. And now I think my storytelling ability is, is it can't be challenged. I don't man. give a fuck who out there rapping right now. Yeah. Me being 46 years old, my storytelling with music yeah. ain't nobody fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? From any rapper right now, you can name from Biggie to who else. I'm just naming Biggie because he's dead. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. But I don't want to name a rapper that's out now because yeah. I don't want no beef with <laughs> nobody. Yeah. yeah, we got it. We got it, but... Exactly. I don't want to feel like I'm disrespecting nobody. I'm with you. But storytelling, I hold, I reign supreme with storytelling. I know I do. Nah, I'm with you yeah, on that. Yeah. I'm with you on that. What about you, G? I, I pulled him in it with 6D Creep. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. <laughs> I, like he said, I kind of came up under him, so I got the both both sides. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. My side plus the storytelling side from him, so I kind of integrated both of them together. You know what I'm saying? So... That's how it is. Gangsta, uh, you you say you know you was you was you know banging the GD back in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's obvious that rap has been infiltrated by the gangs, right? With, the, with right, the young folks, right? Do you feel like uh, that the gangs have messed up the rap with the young boys now, from all the murders from one click to the next, mm. or do you feel like that? It could be our culture could still be savage with the gangs having input in it. I think it could be savage if it's the right message that they putting in it, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got so much of this drill music and a lot of these other rappers that's not really from the drill scene, but they kind of copycatting what they hear because this is what's the the new hype or what's out there. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of people just being followers and just saying a lot of shit that they probably really ain't done or probably really ain't live. Right. So that's where the misconstrued get it. Like, you got a lot of, let me say this about GD. GDs is not a gang. It's okay. an organization, first right. of all. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we ain't dealing on no gang level. We ain't out there talking about doing the gang shit that a lot of other folks be rapping about and trying to put that on us or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you got so many followers out there that's doing what they hear and what they see other people do to it make it seem like that's all they're about and that ain't all what, it, what it's about. So I feel like if we got some real leaders in the gang, as far as whatever gang you repping, Crip, Blood, whatever the set is, mm -hmm. if you speaking positive, if you can look back on these young boys and tell them, hey, I live that life, I done been through that, this ain't what it is, this was gonna get you this, didn't the third, and kind of put some positive in them, I think then the two can connect. Right. Right. But if you still just living on that same get the gun, kill this, do this, do that type of shit, then it's gonna be destroyed. As 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 a as a you know, as a GD, you know, from back in the day, I don't know if you're still acting or not, but mm. do you think that the 
the different gangs that can actually work together in business to make money and to further the culture in rap. Um, and, and I'm going to give you a case in point. Um, uh, T.I. and Boosie was supposed to get ready to drop an album. Right. Right? Right. Mm-hmm. But because Boosie felt like Tip had said something about a dead uncle or blah, 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 mm-hmm. he said, well, I'm standing on my boards. You know, I'm standing on my, my you know, my gold. I ain't, so I'm not doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you think that, you know, did, like, would you do, a, you know, a song with a rapper that was just as big as Tip, but he was a blood, or he was, you know, whatever your rival gang was, would you, would you, would you let your gang and the principal of the street, and we don't deal with them, stop you from doing it in rap? Should that be brought in to rap the street shit? That's a hard one. Because street and business is kind of two different things. You know what I'm saying? Like, we bring the streets into a business. If if I'm cool with a blood and we, and we got a business opportunity to make some money, I don't think that's me going outside of my street culture or my gang culture to get money with them if we just doing it, if we doing it for a bigger cause. But wouldn't your, wouldn't your gang look at it like that? Would, would the, the young gist that's coming up up under you, would they view that like that, man, OG, he over there fucking with the ops? I mean, maybe if it was a situation where we was beefing with them cats. Gotcha. Like if we was beefing with them cats and it's a known beef and my little partners and his little partners don't get along type shit, you know what I'm saying? So maybe I look at it different then because we know they the ops, you know what I'm saying? Right. But if we don't have no dealings fire ass, we never beef, we never had any kind of bad dealings, but I'm on this side and you on this side, but we see an opportunity for us to make some money and make something better, mm-hmm. then I don't think it should be a problem. And I'm glad you said that. And, and and I feel the same way. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, money talk, everything else, you know, you know the rest of it. Right, right. You know, and uh, <laughs> Man, if, if, you know, unless somebody don't, you know, you know, kill somebody in my family or done something. If it's, if it's, we can get some money together, we can get some money, you can kiss my ass, we can go the, the separate way. Yeah. So I kind of just threw that out there because I felt like, you know, Boosie should have did the album. You in the, either you're in the industry or you're in the streets. Which one is it? Yeah, but yeah. he he was at that point, at that point, and we know Boosie. Right. He, <laughs> he, he, was, he was forced, and we know too. He was forced to stand on that principle. I don't think Boosie, and I'm just speaking just in my opinion. Mm, I know what you're going to say, too. He didn't want to lose that bad. Boosie, Boosie love money. Right. You yeah. can see all the shit he's doing on <laughs> Instagram. Right. Boosie going to get it. Yeah. Once it got put out there in the public eye, the public eye on him made his principles, damn, now I got to put it Stand on Right. Him. I think if Tilt would have told Boosie this behind closed doors in the studio, just fucking with some music, man, you know I got damn told on my cousin to get out, goddamn, blah, 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 blah. Boosie would have been like, listen, bro, don't say that shit, bro. Don't <laughs> right. tell, man, listen, don't tell nobody that shit, bro. We got to drop that album. Tilt would have been like, all right, bit, bit, bit. Yeah. They would have dropped the album. Boosie knowing. Yeah, was coming down. That it happened. I think he would have rather for it not to be out there because once what he said about Gangster Williams. Yeah. Oh, you going to have selective outrage, Boosie? You right. cut up on Gangster Williams now. Yeah. And see, people was like, yeah, nigga, you cut up on Gangster Williams. Now what you going to do about Tip? Right. He had to respond. Yeah. I think he still ain't want to respond because if you listen to Vlad, he was like, man, I think Tip was lying. <laughs> he would try his best to clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. I fuck with Boosie. I love both of them boys, man, because they, they, we done watched their career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for that to go like that and a friendship to end like that, even with their kids doing what they was doing, it's, it's a lot of bullshit. I felt personally Tip could have just kept that to himself. But see, but now, to be fair now, Boosie got some tapes out there himself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of him saying? doing uh, some uh, shit. Uh, talking, you know, talking the same type of stuff to you know about investigation. Right, right. I saw that. different stuff too. I saw that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, wait, wait. that's what kind of made me like I, you know, I tell B how this right here, nigga. I'm not a hundred. I'm ninety nine because sometimes I be lying. <laughs> right. Sometimes I be bullshit. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? right, right. And uh, and so I just felt like you know, if you know that you you know, you don't you don't been in a position that you've been talking to. You know what I'm saying? That. Drop the goddamn album. This business. That's yeah. how I felt about it. But I'm glad you explained what you explained. And I knew where you were finna get rid and yeah, go with it. But yeah. a lot of people don't know. So I'm glad you you said that. Sometimes, like you yeah. say, 
Like I tell, I tell my girl, this is exactly what you were trying to say. I tell my mm-hmm. girl this. You can call me a bitch ass nigga and slap me. It was one on one. I don't came in late and we at the crib. Right, right, but right. Don't you do it in front of me. You do it in front of somebody. <laughs> I got to respond. Right. right. I got to do something. So, so, and that's kind of what you said with, with, yeah, with Till. Yeah. Yeah. Had you not said it in yeah. front of everybody. If, 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 like, cause you looking at it, they downstairs in their basement doing music. Yeah. Tip and Boosie got a million dollar album. Cause the, the world was gonna fuck with it. It right. was gonna go down. Man, I was gonna fuck with it. <laughs> right. Tip. Done got tipsy <laughs> and just get to talking. <laughs> man, boy, shit, I ain't gonna lie, goddamn, to keep me out of jail. I'm gonna do anything. <laughs> nigga, get downstairs talking. Boosie hit the butt. Yeah, yeah, but I'm good. I'm good. I need your tip. <laughs> shit, man, I ain't even told on my goddamn dad. Oh, Good, no, bro. No. Blue. Say like, what? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm Didn't put it out. I told him. I told him. I ain't put it out. I ain't put it out. <laughs> Look, we can blow the smoke. You did what? <laughs> man, oh, what's the name? Got killed, man. And we got them had this shit going on. The judge told me, yeah, I get my lawyer told me I can make all this go away. Boost get on clothes that dope. Listen, bro. <laughs> Listen to me, tell me. Bro, I just went off on gangster. On live, bro. Yeah. You cannot. Who you told this story? I ain't told nobody. I'm telling you. Listen, bro. Let me be the last nigga. You tell this shit too. <laughs> Between them, and I'm just saying, Boosie, I fuck with. I even did a song with Boosie. We, yeah, we yeah. did a song with Boosie, yeah. so I fuck with him. I'm just really just. But I'm on the type of time I would have been on. Yeah, me right. and Dirty Boys and 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 and, and Tip finna do an album. Yeah. We know what this shit can bring us. Yeah. Me and G just went off on some nigga named Gangster with or anybody. Yeah. Man, fuck that snitching shit. Blah, blah, blah. You don't do this, you do yeah, got our chest out. We smug with it. <laughs> we finna do this album with Tip. We downstairs in the basement working on music. And Tip say this, man, listen, bro. Don't tell nobody that shit. Yeah. Right. Let them get this album off first and get their money, man. <laughs> right. We still would have did the album with them. Yep. Because your principles at that time don't nobody else know, okay? What's your integrity? Yeah. How, how, because let me tell you the difference with that integrity and the integrity of uh, having a restaurant and cooking and you in the kitchen by yourself and you're not washing your hands mm-hmm. before you deal with these people food cause you alone mm-hmm. versus putting on gloves at all times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a different integrity. Yeah. Some fall on the floor in your restaurant behind closed doors you look around you mm-hmm. pick that shit up yeah. and I'll put it back right. on the thing. Right. Yeah. Is your integrity good enough to where you some drop on the floor you pick that shit up while you alone and throw that shit away. Yeah. So it's different types of integrity. You know what I'm saying? I that you, you got to stand on. That's wrong all the way around. Yeah. If some fall on the floor is nasty, it's supposed to go in the trash at all times. Yeah. Don't give a fuck. Now with Tip, the way Tip felt, it's a billion other people that feel the exact same way. Yeah. Right. If I'm finna do 50 years <laughs> right. and I got a dead cousin, yeah. right? That I can tell on and get out of it. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm, I'm kind of mixed emotions on that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. If she, if she done did some shit. Right. We done did some shit. Right. He pa- pass away yeah. before we go to court. I'm still facing them 40 years. Right. Yeah. Right. This nigga dead. Right. The judge gonna tell me, hey, check this out. If you put it all on that day, <laughs> right, right. you, go you can go today. Right. I didn't think nothing was wrong with that. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I don't want to say I'm going to say it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love pussy. <laughs> I love pussy. <laughs> I love pussy. <laughs> I love pussy. And I love church's chicken. Come on, now. I'm on the church That goddamn churches. <laughs> so, so, not saying that I would snitch on my cousin, but I'm letting you know, Tip wasn't the only one that felt like that. Correct. Yeah. I would, what I would have respected Tip on if he would have stood on it. Mm-hmm. Instead of backtracking on it. Yeah. When he backtracked, he lost me. Right. He supposed to be in, 
Man, I had a cousin, he died, but the lawyer told me, shit, if I tell on this nigga he dead, I'll get off. Damn right I did it. Right. And when they got when he got confronted with it, he must have been like, hell yeah, I did it, I'll do it again. I would have rather for him to stand on it than backtrack. When you right. backtrack, you lose, you lose that with me. Right. You know, either you gon' either you gon' not say nothing at all, or yeah. don't fucking backtrack. Right. Or stand on it. Right. Yeah. What you gonna do? I right. would have rather for him to stand on that shit. Yeah. He would have right. got way more respect. Yeah. Now that he lying, then he came back and said, and I ain't just bouncing on tip, but I'm just going. He put no, it no, on. Yeah. He put it on. It's on tape with him saying, he was just joking. Mm. Okay, now which one it is? See, that's what I'm saying. Right. You know, so I agree with you 100. percent And 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 th now that you say that, that goes back to what you're saying. That's why Boosie is standing on it. Yeah, Boosie got to stand on because, it. Because what you're saying under, under the logic that you're saying, yeah. now that he don't say it, hey, this is my rule, I'm standing on it. Now if he backtrack, right. him and Tip in the same boat. Right. That's why I look at Boosie as a real nigga. Like, even though he know, like, God damn it, damn, we ain't going to get these two, three million out this album and these movies and these videos and these shows. Shit, I got to stand on it. <sighs> yeah, yeah, you do. Come on. You do. Because if you don't, you gonna lose more love and more fans right. because be like, oh, you said this about Gangsta Williams, but you did this with Tip. Right, now right. you look phony. Right. right. Come on. But by him, by him giving up at least five million dollars for this whole project, that's some real shit, right. and I, I respect him for it. Good. Yeah, you respect him. I gotta ask y'all about a few Alabama artists that we all know and love too, man. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Doe yeah. Can y'all speak on Doe B, man, and what he meant to Alabama and, you know, uh, seeing his trajectory and what you think would have happened had he had lived? No, mm -hmm. let me get this. Yeah, let me My second floor is dedicated to Doe. Oh! That's baby Jesus. Fat nigga, chubby face. Reminds you of baby Jesus. In no way, shape, or form, I'm comparing them both as equal. When Jesus was born, he was born to die for the people. One lived in Cloverland. The other walked through Egypt. When Dobie was born, he was born to provide for his people. Now parallel the lives of Dobie and the Lord mm. Jesus. When Jesus was crucified, see, he died with two people. Now open up your eyes and we going to dive a little deeper. When Dobie died that night, see, he died with two people. Rest in peace, Tim and Kim. To all the Christians think I'm disrespecting Jesus, I'm just saying. Dobie is to the hood is what Jesus is to cathedrals. They say God don't make mistakes. Well, I feel he took him too early. You heard me. He ain't deserve for y'all to do him that dirty. I can see him lying there dying with his eyes getting blurry. Can't imagine what's on his mind while he lying there hurting. I know the pain from the slugs wasn't the pain that hurted him. He was more hurt because he had love for them niggas that hurt, murdered him. Fuck this city, though. Boy, you supposed to bend and desert a hill. He was finna blow. Drake and Russell Simmons had heard of him. Now I'm talking straight directly to the asses that murdered him. Worthless ass motherfuckers y'all ain't had to murder him fucking bastards now tell me what were y'all niggas after were y'all mad cause he left y'all ass and closed that chapter my mind keep flashing back because the shit was so tragic the boy was nasty Gucci suit matching the casket Lauren in London I know them babies missing they daddy and Polar Maddie she was old enough to know just what happened and Dariano please believe we can only imagine how you feel for them to kill the best thing that they happened he was here 22 years and he lived through the Trapping, but y'all niggas kill him soon as he get a deal with the trapping with the rapping I'm just asking questions. I feel been deserving some answers if y'all lawyer the dope Then how y'all let them hold kid a captain y'all supposed to been protected the man He the head of the chapter y'all should have been went after them niggas and murdered them bastards I'm sorry, please forgive me, but this shit here so painful. No retaliation. That's crazy. But I guess I don't blame you. Again, I apologize. I'm feeling hurt from the anger. I guess I'm thinking what I'll do if a nigga murk gangster. My God. And that's how we feel about Doby. But God damn. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you snap like hell on that. And I mean, <laughs> I ain't. <laughs> We, he, about, let me wipe a tear right uh, you know, You know, I'll cry now. I, got I, 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 you know, I, don't, I don't mind saying, you know, I, I get one good cry a year. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it was a good cry. If I, if I hit the lottery right now, 
I'm gonna say fuck you behind. I'm gonna cry. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You gotta get that one in. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but yeah, God. we lo- we love that nigga, man. That was a little young nigga that we was passing that buck to. Yeah. I fuck with that little young nigga. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When he got into it with the beef he was in with the guys, I reached out to him, sent him a long text. Hey, move different. Yeah. Don't let that fuck with you. Yeah. He text me back 100 bit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 it hit kind of close to home because where they killed him at, they killed him on a stage in a club that we done did for years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We done did the Rose Supper Club all our life, from talent shows to when we made it big, in the seat of pictures of him laying on that ground dead. We done rocked that stage. Mm. And not only did he die, he stayed to go to a birthday party for the girl when I said he died with two people, like Jesus died with two people, the two people Dobie died with was a girl named Kim, which is the girl. He went to see her before Damn. he left to go out of town. And the only reason he didn't go out of town was because he wanted to show some real love Whoa. to her. He died with two people. That night, three people laying on that stage dead with Dobie. My God. So he, Dobie Del shook the city to this day. Right. Like, because he was our... He was the one. That was our biggie. Yeah. The, when you talk about the love that Dobie had, and you talk about the love that Dirty had, he was that new Dirty. Like, yeah. that boy was above and beyond. Like, I really fuck with his music and his movement. Like, the city... Like, okay, with us, we ran the west side of Montgomery. Mm-hmm. You had uh, small time ballers, they ran the north side. Mm-hmm. And you had Deuce Conrad's, they ran the south side. Mm-hmm. Now, these three different groups that was big in Montgomery at the time, you had us being the first ones to make it out, which trumped a lot of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. When we did a show, the entire West Side would come out. Yeah. So you talking four, five, six thousand people. Mm-hmm. When they did a show, the whole South Side, it was separation. Yeah. Dobie, when he did a show, all sides came out. Mm-hmm. Like this boy, this boy was the biggest smalls. Yeah. And when he died, man, I'm mean, gonna tell you something. And my wife can vouch this, man. When I heard he died, man, he said, man, they done killed dope. Got a call about 2, 3 in the morning. Yeah. I said, no. No. Like, man, it, it took me to a different place. Yeah. Man, I sat on the edge of my bed, man, and I cried. Like, yeah. I really cried because I knew what he came from. Yeah. Trying to make it. Trying to make it out of this city. And once I got the story that... He was actually finna go to Miami and do some shit with Pharrell. Man, you know how hard it is to get out of Montgomery, Alabama? Yeah. And this boy was finna leave. And he went up to the club by himself to show some love. And when he get in the club, the dudes that he was into it with, they killed, they, a commotion got, it's a whole story. I don't want to tell it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On that type of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... It's a lot of people involved in yeah. it, and I don't want to call no names. Yeah, the streets real. Yeah, we can go back to Montgomery and it can be some shit with us. What y'all said, nigga? Name. Exactly. Right. Everybody, everybody in Montgomery know who did it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Um, for them to kill him like they did, it just was wrong. Yeah, it was a big misunderstanding. I know y'all heard the story that one of the dudes was his partner. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he come from him being his partner. So that hit close to home, you know what I'm saying, with the whole world. Like, damn, the niggas that's in the video was the ones that killed him? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it go deeper than that where it was some bullshit where y'all took somebody that was finna bring Montgomery or Alabama back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From Rich Boy, Mr. B, yeah. Dirty Boys, mm. you know what I'm saying, Yellow Wolf. Yeah. Uh, uh, what are they? Attitude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had a good run in there. Even um, honeycomb braids. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got niggas in Alabama got mm-hmm. some swag. Some swag. And then you got Dobie. Yeah. 
that shit fucked this shit up to this day. But that, that's the same thing that kind of, you know, the same situation kind of with Dolph. Mm-hmm. Mo3. Right. Right. Bankroll. Why, bankroll. Right. You know, the niggas around you. Right. Why? When 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 we all came up, and I came up for y'all, but y'all still, you know, was on that tail end of that. I be telling me how I ain't have to go to clubs with bodyguards and that. We rock just as many, you know, shows yeah. and just as many people as the young niggas are doing. But we were going to these shows, like you say, you know, four, five of us. Right. They have, come in the front door, right. holler at the, the, the gang, the pimp and the gangsters right. up in that motherfucker. Right. Right. They fuck with us, drink yep. with them. Yep. You yep. know what I'm saying? Rock the show. And walk out, be out in the parking lot, walk out straight back to my car the yep. way we came. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it didn't mean that shit didn't happen. There were fights, there were shootouts. Right. There was, but the artists were seen, we were kind of off limit. Everybody kind of had the thing, well, look, somebody trying to make it out of Decatur, mm-hmm. these two niggas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's at least get them out of the cater. Right, right. And we can fight amongst each other. That was our era type of attitude. That's that, that's dirty. Right. Let's at least let these boys come in here and do what they gotta do, even if we fight some amongst each other. Right. But now niggas got them in the click killing a nigga before he blow. Right. right. I'm just like, uh I, I don't know. I mean, uh I don't have a solution for it, but the same, you know, same with Dobie. you know. Yeah. That's man. that's what's going on with all the new generation. Right. The last mm-hmm. Mr. Big, man. Yeah. Another one. That was oh, our yeah. partner, bro. Speak on him. Yeah, it's like Big Big was different. He ended up dying from I thought it was a heart attack or a <clears> stroke. Yeah. But it still has the same effect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we really, we really rock with Big. We done did uh, so many shows with Big, man, yeah. to where we were partner partners. And uh that shit hurt. That shit hurt. I, I I don't think his was as devastating yeah. because of how he died. Yeah. Though B was murdered. Yeah. Right. On the stage in front of 500 people. That's different, bro. Yeah. And not only was he murdered, the 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 gruesome way that the other two people where the bullets hit them at and they land on the stage. And then then for the girl to die at her party. Uh, she was the girl who called Doby. Do come show me some love. He was like, I got to go out of town, type of time. Yeah. But he was like, you know what? I'm finna fuck with you. Shit, I'm gonna come through. I ain't got to catch my flight till tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He came to that club to show love and was murdered. So his his story of the dudes that he got into it with, far as it being an ongoing thing. It was more devastating to us. Like, damn, they they ended up getting him, or damn, they got him. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When he tried to turn the other cheek, he said, "Let's kill him with kindness." He called his dogs out. Yeah, man, we ain't finna run behind that. They robbed him. They did this to him. They talking shit, da, 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 making videos about him. This 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 shit this just was confined to Montgomery. Yeah. This shit, a lot of people in the world don't even fucking know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying about that whole situation. And when they killed him, everybody like, damn, they got him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for him to die like that, and him, like the, what they saying, he said while he was laying on the ground, like, you know, just, it's so much with that 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 was more devastating than Big. Not to not shed no light on yeah. Big's though, but Big, Big hurt, the, hurt, hurt, hurt Alabama bad too. Got yeah. Big take that shit to trial. You well, feel me? That's one of them wars. Bro, yeah. come on, bro. Yeah. Talk about these hoes. <laughs> that boy was bad Talk with that. Color. You feel me? Mm. You feel me? <laughs> and then Come I ended up meeting his son. Uh, yeah, his son, we 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 talk, man. He his son doing the music yeah, too. Yeah. 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 hmm Yeah. Rich boy, what did he mean? Oh yeah. You know, he was like kind of like with us. Yeah, the mm-hmm. first one to kind of come out with Polo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let me throw some D's on that bitch. Yeah, Rich Boy, we rock with Rich Boy hard. Now, answer me this, though, because when Doe passed, that was kind of like the beginning of what we have now to where you have artists passing on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. How do y'all feel about the state of hip-hop and where it's going? And then, see, what I've been screaming the whole time is the whole future generation has 50% of 
hundred percent of it has been killed off. I don't know oh, if yeah. anybody realizes that or not. Yeah. Yeah. They are either dead or in jail. So it's like, okay, if you passing the baton to somebody, but they're dying and they're in jail, mm -hmm. there's no way for it to survive. Right. So right. it's kind of reverting back to the OGs to keep the game alive in right. the same breath too, right. because. You can't even get shows out of people that's in jail or in the ground. Right, right. Either. But we still need hip hop. Right. So how do y'all feel like the game is changing? And do you think we'll be able to get fifty more years of this at the Ooh. rate that we going? Ooh. Not at the rate we going, bro. Like, cause it's younger. It's a younger man game now. Like yeah. when we came into hip hop, or when we was coming up off hip hop, niggas was a little older. You know what I'm saying? Fire as the rappers that was out there doing their thing, they was grown niggas. Mm -hmm. So they had a little different principles and morals about life. These young cats, man, I don't think they really give a damn about nothing. You know right. what I'm saying? And if we keep down this road, I don't think hip hop gonna be around any long, that much longer because right. it's a separation from the old and the young. And like you said about the OGs, it's up to us to kind of keep this thing going. But How? the crowd and the people that support the hip hop now, don't yeah. really fuck with the OGs. Yeah, like they that. don't mm. respect it. They don't respect the we OGs. Old heads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's more yeah. of a what's popping now. You know what I'm saying? But see, I'm going to say this, though. That's how y'all might feel. Mm -hmm. But like I tell you, I saw my comments. Right. And dirty, dirty, dirty. Yeah. When you going to get dirty up there? When right. They, so the question is, what, is, what it always smell like to me? Because I had to tell this guy the same thing. I said, wait. I grew up listening to Straight From The Dick. Now, I'm from the West right. Side, but I felt that song and Indicator's my song. Straight From The Dick is all right, but Indicator's the one that <laughs> I love personally. Yeah. But I said I was there, and I experienced that, and I felt that. So that feeling that I got from that music never went away. You right. went away. The right. feeling that I had for right. the music Ooh. didn't go nowhere. Right. You I went somewhere. So it was like, no, you got to get back in front of your people and talk to them. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Because with with hip hop being 50 years old, right, we all grown out here. True. Yeah. I'm 39. I ain't no young punk myself. True. Right. You see what I'm saying? But I love what I love, and I know what I like. And then also, this is the other thing too. I can say this for my age. After a certain age, you get disconnected from the new hip hop. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. So I listen to Dirty. I listen to UGK. I mm -hmm. listen to Cass. I listen to Goody Mob. I listen to Get On Mafia because. That's what I want to hear right. to this day. Mm, right. So I think, you know, we got to do a better job of just keeping the culture alive and well. Because mm. I think a lot of times folks just get pissed off and say, man, fuck it, I'm done with it. I don't feel like dealing with these niggas no more. Right, mm, right. You see what I'm saying? Or the fame will burn people out and be like, you know, I just want to be a regular person again. Right. You see what I'm saying? For y'all, what was it like returning back to civilian life after traveling the world and doing y'all thing? It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay because we, I'm, I'm going to tell you, because we're humble. Mm -hmm. We was never not humble. Mm -hmm. Even when we was the dirty boys, we were still humble. We yeah. always knew what home was. We never strayed away or stunted on the people that gave us that push to get to the top. That's why we're able to still go back to the neighborhoods we're from and still live in Montgomery, Alabama, and nobody has never touched a hair on our head in our city. Mm -hmm. We're the OGs. We know real killers that's down there really killing, but respect us to call us, yes, sir, but OG, but I yes, love y'all nigga, and we know this nigga just killed somebody. You know what I'm saying? Come on. So it's a respect that we had. So when we went back to civilian life, mm -hmm. it was a shift. Because we was used to 30, 40,000 a week doing mm -hmm. five or six shows. Yeah. So now, them shows don't come like that. Yeah. Now, we still get them. And out of a 12-month span, you got maybe two shows a month. Yeah. Sometimes it might go three months, and then you get a show. Mm -hmm. And then it go a month, you get a show. Then the rest of the year, you ain't getting that. Yeah. So now, what I'm going to do as a man, and I got six kids, what I'm going to do as a man, and my biggest fear is having to tell my kids no because I got to yeah. versus tell them no because I want to. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yep. That's two big different things. So it is. When yep. your kids ask you something, you ask you what you need it for. Well, Dad, I got to get this for my class. Or the, 
Shit, nah, I can't give it to you. Yeah. You ain't even, me, to me, you're not even a man at that point. Yeah. When you got to tell them no like that versus what you needed for, man, EJ come out, they $400. <laughs> Hell no. He ain't getting no. Go we'll get some new balance. I give you $400, but you're going to get exactly. three pound new balance. Come on. And get you some blah, blah, blah. Right. And say put the rest of it in your pocket and take your girlfriend out to eat. And you can buy an outfit versus buying a pair of joints yep. that come out every year. Right. Fuck all that. Wanting to tell them no versus having Having to to tell tell them no. no. That's some real shit right there. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid. That's a big fear for me. That's why I got so many hustles now in the trucking business. Yeah. Owning a restaurant. Yeah. Got my own tax company. That's up. Got a salon. Because when my kids call me now, I got two sons that's in the Navy. Mm. But they're still my babies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, Dad, you got $50 you can send me. I'm like, well, what is you doing with your money? (laughs) Send me your cash out again. I just sent it to you last week. Send it again. I ain't finna look for it. You know what I'm saying? We gonna talk shit to them, right. but we still gonna send it. Come on now. Your kids got to be able to come to you no matter what yeah. age they are. Mm-hmm. And you got to be, as a man, to do that shit to get it. So I don't work Hyundai plants. Yeah. Man, I walked in the hunt. My first job since my job before the Dirty Boys mm-hmm was one of the Hyundai plants called Movis. They made the bumpers for the Hyundais. Mm-hmm. As you know, in Montgomery, we got like, shit, probably 10, probably 10 factories yeah. that build yeah. the Hyundai cars. Yeah. From mm-hmm. the bumpers, you got one place to just do the frames of the car. You got Hyundai plant to put the car together. You yeah. got this one to only do bumpers. So it's so many jobs in Montgomery, and I jumped on board. Man, yeah. I got to get a job. You know what I'm saying? We making... Four five thousand dollars a show, but a show is coming far and in between. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. We writing for people, but money coming in between. Man, we got to get jobs. Yeah, damn that money we was getting. Why the fuck we went saving it like we needed to? Mm, right. Let's get a job. Yeah. I walk in the plant the first day. Niggas looking. Man, I got on my fucking uh, dickies because you got to have on dickies. Yeah. Your staff shirt because mm-hmm. you working for a temp serve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This, this 2008, bro, I don't went from being the Dirty Boys, one of the coldest groups it was, to humbling myself enough to go get trained by a nigga that used to buy our music and looked at me as an OG. Bro, yeah. just show me how to do that bumper right. I'm mm-hmm. trying to make sure I keep that job. Yeah. I ain't worried about it. Man, I love y'all shit, but that pimp in the gang. So, yeah, bro, but it's shit, up. man, he the man coming. It's real. We ain't finna get in trouble. Is why you <laughs> talking about the dirty boy shit. Man, <laughs> fuck this dirty boy shit. Show me how to load these bumpers on that thing right so I can get this check. Yeah. I got bills to pay. Yeah. Man, that shit taught me, boy. I did that shit two years, three years. I like no, it's hard. It's yeah. hard for me to be to clock in on somebody's clock. Yeah. Coming from a boss yeah. and clocking in on somebody's clock. That shit different. Yeah. I had to go back to being a boss. I went and got in and got my uh, CDLs. Yeah. Got on the nigga truck for two years. Saved my money wearing the same house shoes. Come I had on about fleet fila house shoes that I wore for two years straight on my truck. And made me a hundred and sixty thousand. Come on. Bought my own truck. Started me a trucking company. I ain't looked back since. Come on. Got a restaurant. Built it up from the ground. The Yummy Grill, Montgomery, Alabama, three twenty three Out Base Boulevard. Why I do the turkey legs? I'm the only one in the city doing turkey legs. Ooh. Doing three hundred turkey legs. You brought those now turkey legs. <laughs> I should have brought some one. I built that company. That I built that company up, and I just sold that company. Yeah. Yeah, so man, now I opened up a tax business and yeah. we're doing good. I'm thriving. Yeah. It's hard to go from that to that. Now, I don't knock nobody to do it, but it's just hard for me yeah. to take that from somebody. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I had to go back to being a boss. It might fuck with you. Damn, well, we were doing arenas. Yeah. We were doing this. But as a man, and what I respect about any man that's out there that's knowing what you got to do. And you do it. Come on, man. Man, you know how I felt going to the break room, bro? After being the dirty boys. Yeah. Now I got to go to the break room and eat a sandwich, sit down, people looking at me, not, not, not down in me, but I'm just looking like, damn, this one I'm at, I supposed to been way. I understand down to the team. I understand. Bro. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We supposed to be so farther than what we are because me and Gangster was two of the coldest. Yeah. And we supposed to have been so far, but looking at us now, we stayed strong. We still getting it. We still doing shows. 
I'm doing plays where I write plays in Montgomery and I throw them. Uh, we writing movies. Like, we're, we're doing so much stuff now that we done left, not left the music world, mm -hmm. but we learned to survive without it. Exactly. We do it because it's still fun and we can. Like, I just spit that verse. That yeah. was off mm -hmm. our album before the last one called Feel Niggas. Yeah. One of the hardest albums. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? So we still got the skills. We still can write for people, ghost write for people, and we still do verses. Mm -hmm. So we still do music for the fun, but when it comes down to the nitty gritty, man, we're going to get on a job. Yeah. we going to work. we going to grind. A lot of rappers now. need to hear yeah. that. that that's, that's the realest shit I don't heard a motherfucker say don't came up in here. We don't, I, we don't interview to everybody. Yeah, because everybody yeah. want to be this. They want to be that. They, yeah. they want to come with this persona that they getting it. Man, when you leave out of here, you better be back to the E4 job to clock in. <laughs> Come on now. Man, we was the Dirty Boys. We was the Dirty Boys, and we did it, and we lived it. Bro, I had to get on people's jobs. Man, I done did jobs I ain't want to fucking do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. He done did jobs he ain't want to do, right. but he got two kids. Come three on. Three kids. Three. Come on. I got six. I better make sure I'm at this plant, and I got these steel toe boots on. And my goggles and my hard hat. I'm going to talk shit to these niggas on this flow. But at the same time, bro, we got to get back on the flow. Exactly. And I'm going to get back to my job. I'm driving a tractor. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm picking up paper. When you ain't busy, you got a boss man talking to you. This nigga younger than you. When you ain't busy, man, y'all need to pick up all that. Man. <laughs> bro, you got, to hum you got to humble yourself to a point where you see, boy, you, hey. Yeah. But you see, got, the thing is, though, it takes that. To make you oh. do what you want to do. I ain't right. never going back you to that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It takes that. You got right. to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But then also, like I tell folks all the time, because folks be like, B, how long you do this? Why don't you do that? I said, I'm not going to stress myself out. Right. Trying to look a certain way for every goddamn body mm. and Thanks. be a certain type of way for everybody. Mm. You're going to get my black ass broke me whether right. I'm rich or poor. I don't give a damn. If you don't like me for me, goddamn it, you can go to fucking hell. Because right. I don't give a fuck. Right. Facts. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this too. I don't. Everything that you don't say, it's like, bro, it's like, I'm y'all brother, man. <laughs> right. And, 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 right. And everybody in here knows it. So <laughs> right. they, you know, be high, know it. Right. What y'all talking about? Yeah. Yep. yeah. And I'm gonna say this to you. That job and stuff that humbled you, right? Yeah. You were being judged then. Oh yeah. Because it's been, it would have been easy for you. Ego is the number one thing that kills, especially black men. Mm -hmm. And not just physically kill you, mm -hmm. emotionally kill you. Right. Mm -hmm. And for years, I wouldn't do that. Right. Because I was the same way. I'm wicked from ghetto mafia. Right, 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 right. Everything you don't you, said. You above that. Exa exactly. Right. But I, when I humbled myself, just like what y'all said, mm -hmm. and made it about the kids, about right. everybody that's bigger than me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then along comes B highs. Right. I ain't know the man from Adam. Right. But the blessings came because I was able to humble myself as a man mm -hmm. and do what the fuck I'm supposed to do for my family. Right. So my creator, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in a certain creator like I'm not gonna say it's a God or a lamb or right. everybody got right. their own thing. Right. Right. right, right. But my creator saw fit since I humbled myself. Right. That'll bring somebody in and say, hey. That nigga helped me too. It ain't no one way street. No, no, you yeah. did. You yeah. did. You did. Yeah. But look, but yeah. look, but look. I'm happier now than I yeah. ever been making way more money, money yeah. than I was getting back then. You got a peace of mind. You got a peace of mind. Yeah. I tell you that all the time. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, I I I just say that, man, that. You, <coughs> nobody has ever sat here. You know, I don't heard all kind of game. I right. got game. You got game. Every game, Everybody game, right. recognize game. Right. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, and and most motherfuckers won't give you real. No, they won't give you real. They want you to look at them in a certain light. They want to run with the Joneses, and they want to be this. No, bro, I got steel toe boots in my closet right now. If I got to go back, I just have to go back. <coughs> I don't want to. It's too much pressure. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Folks put unnecessary pressure on, on themselves, themselves yeah. 
trying to live up to folks that don't give a fuck about them. Right. These folks don't give a damn. They don't even know damn. you. They, can't, they ain't shitting what you eat. No, so why am no I bills. doing that? You ain't see what I'm saying? No bills, ain't taking care of your yeah, kids, like none of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. Shit, my, you know, I did everything y'all were doing. It's like, it's like we were just brothers. All the dumb shit. All the, you know, the good, I don't, do, my reputation here in the city has that, robbing niggas. That's kind of why we got hell get ghetto my the, the promoters, we're jumping on them, whooping their ass, mm-hmm. taking niggas shit, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Then got there getting fucked up, and when I when I got fucked up, bruh, I got depressed for a long time. My partner out there, I tell you, I wouldn't even come out. I don't stop rapping, I won't fuck with none of that shit because of what you say when you had to go to a job and a nigga saying this to you. I wouldn't come out. Right. I right. wouldn't holler at nobody and then My partner out there, I tell you. And he was like, he was like, bruh, I got a partner from uh from Alabama, um, Mud. Uh, Larry or there. He him and that nigga out there, he from Gaston, my boy uh Mud. Okay. They got me working again mm-hmm. because I told B how I said with what rap gave me was depression, mm. oh, zombia, yeah. uh uh sex, uh a sex addict, mm. an alcoholic. Um you remember I posted yeah, a, a, a thing, oh, yeah, all, yeah. all those things. That's what it, it. That's what you know. I made money, yeah. right? But that's what I took away from it. The so money many left. Vices. So many. But vices. I took. Yeah, I took all that with me. Right. You know what ah, I'm saying? Couldn't right. really have a good relationship with a woman because I seen so many holes. Right. Right. You right. understand what I'm right. saying? Um. So and I'm still battling all that shit right now. I, I'm. I'm even battling how to save and deal with money. Because money came so fast for mm-hmm. us so young. Right. So we didn't respect money. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. See, so we got to relearn to respect money all over oh, again. Yeah. I don't, I yeah. just get into it with hoes and shit, be like, bitch, that ain't number $500, man. What, the, what you talking about? Right. But that's everything in this bitch. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But to me, man, I take her to the club and fuck that off in, mm-hmm. in 20, 30 minutes. Bitch, I'm going to get it back to you. Right. No, I ain't got a show for goddamn three months. Yeah. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? Right. So now a nigga liar. Right, <laughs> you see what I'm saying. So, mm-hmm. so I understand what y'all yeah. are saying. I don't, I don't bend there. I yeah. understand, yeah. and I'm still, and it's a battle to, to, to start the, the, the thinking, yeah. the mind thing. It fuck you, it fuck you thinking up. You know, the world is, man. I'm halfway living in a dream and halfway living in reality. Yeah. So I'm halfway living in ghetto mafia, but halfway living in Roderick. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those are two separate things. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And oh you yeah. Know so, how to turn them on and off. Right. right. Yeah. So, so I feel y'all, man. I appreciate it. I need to hear that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Hell, gangster. Thank y'all for coming through, man. Yeah, man appreciate time, y'all, bro. bro. Y'all know we here for it. Whenever y'all in the city, y'all got to pull up through this thing now. Yeah, right. Don't play with us. Yeah, we're we gonna know. come we back gonna and promote, man. Yeah, we yeah. got a new album we're working on. Oh, right Live now. like a pimp, die like a gangster. Ooh. Well, y- y'all working on now, I gotta get on there. I don't care oh, if I just say one that, time. That's what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I don't care if I just say what's happening. I got to have you on it. Okay. But the only way you gonna get on it, Uh-oh. y'all got to do. And I'm old school. Uh, I know what you're you about say. to piss a ball. That, bro, I, that flow, I don't do straight from the deck. <laughs> Came Be, on. I tell you that. No, no, I'm Behind. thank you. But this is the issue with Negroes like here. They want me to do that same old flow. Bruh. Nigga, that's what they know you for, fool. <laughs> Bruh. That's what they that, want. That flow was iconic. I did a, I did Spice One hit me. He sent me a track. I knew what the track was. <laughs> I knew. It was on that type of shit. I the track what it was. Yeah. So I rap regular on the motherfucker. Right? Right. And <laughs> I sent that track back. He ain't speak to me about for about three weeks. He wanted to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so finally when he hit me back, he was like, man, you know, I just, I thought you were gonna put like straight from the date flow on. I said, Bro. I said, I said, I said, Brad, that was only three or four songs. That, that show you must have listened to all my other songs. I didn't write like that on every single song. Man. You know what I'm saying? He's like, well, I don't give a fuck. But y'all <laughs> niggas were flowing though. Y'all was flowing. Yeah, but, but we didn't that that, that, I'm about to explain it to him like this. What you were saying, Wick, is like Twister. I say, hey, Twister. I need you to get on a song and I give me that twist the flow. I need twist. And then you come on that bitch rapping like rapping Tupac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed. I'm going to be so disappointed. I would lose my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you do. He just like pissing folks off. Hey, I, I, I piss Spice off too. He, he to Don't piss worry about it. I do the song. Yeah, he like, <laughs> came up. You sh- came, came down. down. You need to. You, you, <laughs> I told him I was gonna play him in the movie too. We, we, need, we, need, we, need, we need to drop his mix CD. Dang it! It's, it's, it's called it's called a sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him. Y'all see why I hate me, man. Right, 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 right. Okay, and I'm that 
note, <laughs> we out of this thing. Fellas, appreciate y'all, man. Let me get a shout-out. Let me get a shout-out, man. Oh, yeah, yes, come sir. on with yes, it. Sir. Then also uh, contacts, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can... Uh, Anything fire uh 334 Dirty Boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh 334 Gangster. Uh that's a handle for IG, Facebook, Daniel Thomas, Dirty Boys. You you'll see it. Um I just rented out the Acadome in Montgomery, Alabama on campus, ASU campus. Yeah. I'm throwing the first annual slam dunk contest. Ooh. So I'm more so into that yeah, as yeah. well. So y'all come out, man, and enjoy this slam dunk contest. I got some young guys that's jumping out of the gym. Uh, it's a three-point contest. It's a free throw contest. And the Greeks, the Capitals and the Sid was going to do a five-on-five pickup game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, whoever, the winner of the slam dunk contest will win the Jamari Chop Award. Mm. And he's a young guy that went to Lee High School that was a beast. Yeah. And he ended up drowning about two years ago. My God. He died. Some of his friends went to uh, one of the little water places up there, like a lake. Yeah. And he ended up drowning in the lake. Yeah. And uh, that really hurt the community. And also the Roderick Scott Award. He died on the way going to Birmingham to a game. And he was a three, the three-point king. Mm. So they're going to win those awards. It's going to be in remembrance of them. So their mom's going to give the trophies out. So y'all come out and rock. Alabama State, ASU, Akadon, April the 1st, the slam dunk contest. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gangster. Man, I just want to shout out everybody that fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Beehive, my boy Gangster Week. You know for having us on this platform. It's Galaxy Week now. Galaxy, Galaxy Week. Week. Galaxy, Galaxy, Galaxy Week. Week. My bad. My bad. Jimmy Galaxy Neutron. Week. Yeah, Galaxy Week yeah. and tap dance. Well, and all that. I don't. Yeah. Tap dance. <laughs> right, right, right. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, man, Shoot. shout out to everybody what? in the gun. Shout and, out to uh, my son, Devin Thomas. Shout out to my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Dana mom, and Deb. You know. Big, Tamira, my grandbabies, Deshaun, Devaris, y'all daddy still, hip. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, I got kids. Come on. These, these niggas think they real. Come on. Wow. The fly guys. Come so on now. Like, they so lame. What? So they 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 yeah, they'll call you lame in yeah. a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, appreciate y'all again, man. man. Appreciate y'all. Man. Man. Radio show and OG Games the Wicked. Them dirty boys. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We gone.